Nice, man. Just a uh, an amazing finish for you tonight, man. G give me the feel of of, of that victory because that was pretty impressive. Yeah, man. I feel feel amazing. You know, uh, I took the fight short notice, two weeks. Uh, you know, I'm a veteran in the sport, so I knew I knew I knew how to fight. You know, no matter what, uh, I wasn't able to make 135. We made the fight at 145, so I'm thankful for that. And uh, the power showed, man, at, at featherweight. I don't think I could stay at featherweight, but the power was there for sure. Not necessarily an easy fight, right? He was definitely having some successful moments at first. So as the fight was playing out, kind of what were you seeing? What was going through your head? Yeah, I, you know, first round, I start slow a lot of the time. And uh, I think he knew that. He was coming out a little powerful. He's an undefeated guy. He has a lot of confidence, you know. But uh, that gives me a little chip on my shoulder to, to give him that, that first loss. And, uh, you know, I was happy to do so. Oh, God. And an emphatic finish, man, obviously. Big. What's the feel of something like that, right? I mean, it's an amazing finish. Normally, the roar of the crowd would be insane. It's just you yelling, you're right. Uh, yeah. What's what's that What's that feeling like for you? It was still kind of cool, Migs. I heard like John Anik and uh, Felder like, whoa! Like I heard that crystal clear, so that was cool to hear. Uh, it was an interesting experience. Uh, I felt like I handled it really well, you know, no fans, just kind of kept focused, looked straight ahead, and just uh, just went with the flow of things and enjoyed it. It, it, it was nothing. I'm sure I'm going to have to do it again, too, so. Yeah, good point there. Uh, it looked like you had a conversation with Dana afterwards. Can you tell us what, what was said in that conversation with Dana? Uh, I told him, uh, I want my tie-dye shorts. You know, I'm stealing a little swag from Bryce Mitchell here. I know he's, he wants his cavo shorts, so I want tie-dye shorts. What's, you know, what's the difference? So I was saying that, and then I was saying, uh, I told him to, to roll Sean O'Malley up in a joint so I could smoke his ass. <laughs> Why O'Malley? I mean, he's a guy that seems like, I mean, everybody calls him out, right? It seems like everybody's asking for a fight with him. Why O'Malley? Well, I mean, I, it, it's kind of it's kind of obvious, you know, the, the UFC loves the guy. He's got a lot of hype behind him. He's one of those star in the making type people. So for me, it's a it's a business move. Like, it's nothing personal, but I wanna I wanna steal that hype. You know, I wanna I wanna make myself a star in the sport and and and, and put that all behind me. So that's the way to do it, you know, to take a guy out like that. Um, I'm willing to, you know, fight a guy like him and then and, you know, move up in the rankings, you know, hopefully in the top 10 after that. Uh, I saw online that you had uh, some praise from Darren Till. I just and <laughs> sort of didn't understand what he's saying. What was that like just to receive that? That was kind of funny, man. I don't know if you saw what he tweeted, but I had no idea what he meant. He's drinking something tonight for sure. Yeah, he says that your mum has the boldest head in combat sports, but what done it win. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think this comes from your grandpa, right? When, you, when you're bald like this, you lose your hair. I think it comes from that side. So it is my mom's dad. So he's kind of, he's kind of right. <laughs> Uh, Brian, uh, what's this around your neck you got? Oh, you know what this is. I'm keeping this tight, close to my heart. We got Tiger's Eye right here. We're two for two. We, I think this is another bonus, right? I mean, come on. I, I, you know, it's going to be hard to beat that tonight. So um, keeping the Tiger's Eye close. Actually, kind of funny. Uh, my brother's girlfriend, uh, you know, her friend owns a crystal place, right? She, uh, she gets me a bracelet for my fight. She's like, uh, yeah, just, you know, they picked it out. They thought it was good for you for your fight. I'm like, oh, what is it? I look at it. It's a tiger's eye bracelet. You know, what do you know? So uh, it's just kind of drawn to me. So I got to I got to stick with it. Hey, Brian, I know you had a sugar, sh uh, sh mo sh sugar Sean show song. <laughs> do you have a song for today? You had a Fight Island song also. Sugar, now you got no wings. <laughs> That's it? No victory? Prepared? That's it, man. That's it. Okay. <laughs> okay, we are now joined by Brian Kelleher. Uh, first question goes to James Lynch with the score. James, your line is open. Hey, Brian, congratulations on the victory. Uh, first, I got to ask, how was it fighting at featherweight tonight and not having to cut those extra pounds? You know, it was uh, it was a big difference, especially uh, coming into fight week, not really having to stress it too much. You know, uh, I was like 164 pounds like two and a half weeks ago, so I knew I couldn't make bantamweight. Um, but, you know, I got the weight off pretty quick. I got down to, you know, 155-ish, like, as I got closer. And, um, man, the power showed at featherweight. Uh, I had a lot of power behind the, those punches. It felt a little different than bantamweight, but uh, I don't think I could fight these big featherweights. Anything about Hunter surprise you in this fight? Not really. Uh, he did a lot of the things that I watched that I saw on tape. You know, his tendencies are to throw wide hooks, uh, low leg kicks, 
couple of uh, left body kicks he walks into. I kind of saw everything that I expected from him. Um, you know, he he uh, he felt strong in there. He definitely hit pretty hard, but I uh, I weathered the storm. I stayed patient, and uh, and I uh, I get better as the rounds go on. And that was your first uh, TKO win since October of 2017. Is there a bit of a weight lifted off your shoulders? I know you've had submission wins, but getting that TKO finish is always nice. Well, that, there's no T in that. that. That's a KO, right? Yeah. Yes, KO. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's been a little while, man, but uh, it feels amazing to get that. You know, I'm a finisher, like whether it's submission, TKO, KO, like I always, I always look to finish the fight. So uh, for sure, when you see me fight, you're going to see some finishes. And last one for me, I know you wanted some custom uh, Reebok gear. Uh, why not the New York Islanders co co colors? I was kind of surprised by that. Hey, you got me there. We should have asked for that. I figured tie-dye shorts would be fitting for the O'Malley fight, you know? Enjoy the win tonight, Brian. Thank you, James. Appreciate it. Uh, up next, we have Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. Hey, Brian, congratulations. Obviously, Hunter had a very good start to that fight. Can you just talk about what instruction you got in between rounds going into the second? Man, that's a good question. Right now, I can't recall exactly what they were saying. I think uh, mostly just let go of my, my punches, you know, uh, get in range, get a little bit closer. Don't have to throw too much power behind it, but just touch him up a little bit. Like once I was jabbing him and uh, and committing to, to my punches, I started to piece him up a little and uh, I saw him started to fade a little bit once I started to land. So, uh, you know, for me, first round started a little slow. I let him kind of... Uh, you know, let a little bit of steam out, and then uh, I came out strong in the second. On Saturday, we had a lot of people talking about how the commentators, you know, words, because it was so quiet, they could hear a lot going on. Was that the experience for you? Like, did you feel like you were getting Daniel Cormier's instruction also, or were you tuning a lot of them out? No, you know, I didn't hear any instruction as far as like what they were commentating. I definitely heard voices, you know, it was different. Uh, but I heard my corner crystal clear. I heard uh, Hunter's corner as well. It was kind of funny. Uh, I heard Hunter's corner say, oh, that was nice. You broke his nose. And I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm in the middle of the fight thinking, oh, shit, like, did he really break my nose? Like, I don't know. You know, I have adrenaline. So I saw something in the corner of my eye here. And I started to wipe it just to see, like, is that my nose that I see? You know, is my nose all crooked? So they actually got me with that. You know, it was interesting to hear what they were saying and to hear my corner crystal clear. Finally, you're now building this reputation, the Contender Series killer. Can you just talk about what is it about the Sean O'Malley fight that gets you pumped up for the matchup? Is it just his name? Is it the style? Talk to me. Yeah, man, it, it, it's just his name, the hype, you know, the UFC. I know how they do things, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're trying to, you know, bring these these guys that have star potential up slow and, and you know, give them the, you know, matchups that, that are more favorable for them potentially. And, and I know uh, at some point you got to just fight who they put in front of you. It, it doesn't matter. You know, at some point, if you think you're the best, you got to fight anybody who they put in front of you. So uh, I'm, I'm just trying to steal that hype, you know, and I'm trying to make my career better. Uh, you know, if he's going to be a star and I take him out, then I'm going to be a star. Gotcha. Brian, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Shaquille Majuri with MMA Mania. Hey, Brian, congrats on the huge win, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, for those not in the know, uh, Brian Kelleher is, as far as I'm concerned, the best rapper in MMA. When's the album dropping? <laughs> I know. We, we got to come out with some more songs, man. They got me singing over here at the post-fight media day. They got, uh, you know, I got some songs in the works. Uh, I got some songs on Spotify, but uh, I definitely want to make like a full album or a full mixtape and then release it all together at once. Um, it's hard, man, because when I'm in these fight camps, like I'm 100% focused on the fight game. So, uh, you know, sometimes I write and I kind of do things in between my training sessions, but uh, I definitely don't put enough time into it to make what I, you know, the quality that I really know I can make. So I got to put a little bit more time in after the fight now. Speaking of quality, that was a quality KO. Uh, there's like a lot to unpack in that moment. I'd like it if you can break it down for us because you drop him, you're ready to celebrate. You know he's out. There's like a quarter of a second. You see the referee's not jumping in, so you go for the follow-up. Can you like walk me through everything that's going in your mind from the moment you land that shot? 
Yeah, so he throws an inside leg kick. I counter with a left hook. I kind of, I kind of faint to the to the left side, and then I throw my left hook, and I can just feel it in my my glove, like the way that it connects is like, ooh, like I know that that was the shot. Like I see his chin kind of snap. He falls back. I'm looking at him. I see in his face he's out cold, you know, and I know, and I don't want to. Uh, you know, continue to inflict more damage on guys if I don't have to. So, you know, I, I, I kind of see the ref pull up beside me, but he's not stepping in to stop the fight. So I have no choice but to follow up and finish. And I really uh, hit him good with two hammer fists. And then the ref stepped in there. That's incredible how much you can process there in such a short amount of time. Last thing for you, uh, I heard on the broadcast that you did have a chance to uh, connect with Dana White real quick. Did you talk about the Sean O'Malley fight at all? And if so, what did he say? Yeah, yeah, I told him I want the tie-dye shorts, you know, for the Sean O'Malley fight. I <laughs> thought like that was fitting, you know, so I was telling him that. And then he was telling me actually that uh, the odds, uh, a lot of people are betting right now, you know, because sports are, are not really going on. So a lot of people are placing bets on these fights. And during my fight, he says, during the rounds, you can change your bets. So as the second round was coming up, I became even bigger of an underdog. And his buddy, who he knows – from like his hometown, he says, places a huge bet on me literally right before I knock out Hunter. And I was just laughing like, holy shit, that's crazy. I I want a percentage of that. And you deserve it, Brian. Thank you so much, man. Uh, Congratulations again. Thank you. Appreciate it. And last question comes from uh, Luis Green with MMA Crazy. Your line is open. Hi, Brian. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Obviously, I know you want the Sean O'Malley fight, um, and these aren't normal circumstances that we're in at the moment. But you know, coming off of this momentum, when when is it that you would like to get back in there again? Yeah, well, I kind I got some stitches on my my toes, which you know they give you like a thirty day suspension thing. So uh, you know, I'm sure that'll heal up pretty quick. I'll be able to do things to work around it. But uh, you know, I would like to fight on Fight Island, or if that's going to be, you know, maybe. Early July would be nice for me. Uh, maybe at the Apex in Vegas, we'll see how things play out. But uh, you know, right now, May thirteenth, you know, June, June, I would say by mid July to late July probably would be uh, would be a good time for me. Okay, and, and obviously two back to back finishes now. Is there anything that you can kind of put that down to? Anything that you've maybe changed going into the last two fights that you can, uh, you know, uh, credit your your performances to? Yeah, for sure. It's cool, calm, collected. You know, uh, it's my mindset. Uh, I've, I've, you know, talked to myself and I convinced myself to enjoy the process all the way through. You know, there's a lot of crazy nerves and crazy thoughts that come and you have to understand and accept that thoughts are just thoughts. You can't allow them to control you and, and make you feel certain ways. So, you know, sometimes you get these, these crazy nerves and these negative thoughts that come in and, and you know, fighting's a, a crazy, scary thing. So you have to uh, allow yourself to remain calm and to, to have fun with this crazy thing that you're about to do. And, and that's what I do now going into these fights. I smile before and I just kind of tell myself like, you love to do this, you know, like this is, this is, this is all you do. This is all you know. So have fun with it. All right. Well, congrats. Thanks. Thank you.